Hello everyone, I'm Must Be Tuesday Music, and uh, I am a member of Edgecase Collective. I have done some music-related streams on here before, uh, for example, live songwriting in Mario Paint, and playing the Zelda 2 soundtrack on the piano while Meg Mac Attack plays the game. And today I'm going to talk about creating looping music levels in Mario Maker 2. When I first had the idea to do this, my idea was <laughs> that I would learn everything there is to know about making looping music levels, and then I would just relay that info to you. And it turned out that it's actually extremely complicated and difficult. <laughs> it was way harder than I expected it to be. So instead of telling you everything there is to know about making looping music levels, I'm going to show you some examples of really good music levels just just like a couple examples of music levels by really talented level creators and then i'm going to talk about um what i learned in my journey trying to figure out how this works and uh some difficulties i ran into along the way and hopefully if you're getting started making your own looping music levels or music levels in general uh you'll be further ahead than i was when i got started um so uh, before I start, though, I gotta give some credits uh, to the places where I got help. Um, so one uh, pretty well-known, really talented music level maker is Composer. That's spelled com underscore poser. And I ended up joining Composer's Discord channel where I got some really good help. Um, I'm actually gonna put a link to that Discord. Uh, it's not like a secret or anything. You can just go to Composer's Twitch page and get this link. But um, that's a place where I went where I got help and some people who helped me were called Cerise and Catherine Beefheart and I'm very grateful for them for answering my beginner questions. And um, one of those people linked me to some really interesting documents. There's, um, I'm just gonna put links to those things in the chat. There's the Ultimate Compendium of Mario Maker Resources and Guides compiled by FlameWizzy21. The Mario Maker Global Music Guide by Guy J1, also known as BB Mario Maker 2. And there's a video on correction lengths of tracks by Ma Lo. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Uh, so let me put these links in here because this is, it's a lot of info. <laughs> and, um, uh, and like, it, it'll, I haven't even finished reading that document the uh the global music guide because there's a lot in there but um that's uh some of the places where i got some of the info that i used um so first of all let's start by looking at this level um the video game music quiz by bernardo and uh and this is not a looping level this is a linear level but it'll show you some of the basics um so what you need in order to make a music level is you need some pink music blocks and um you need uh some stuff to bounce against the pink music blocks white music blocks don't work because they don't differentiate between different instrument sounds or different pitches uh, and pink music blocks do so this level is giving me a helmet because one of the things that's making noises is hammer brothers <laughs> and they're throwing hammers obviously and i could die so the helmet protects me anyway so this little conveyor shows me that i can't just be walking i have to be running uh, and so that's the expected speed that the level expects me to go at. So, uh, we have to say, what game was that from? Because this is the point of this level, and it was a Zelda song, so let's go down here. Um, and the thing, though, about this speed is it does affect how the music sounds. Um, so they're telling you you have to run, but... You can just stop running. You can stop moving altogether. It's up to you. <laughs> so another way you can control the speed that the music goes at is by uh, making it an auto scroll level. And that way the player will have no uh, control over how fast the level goes. Uh, you can also put conveyor belts on the ground here and that'll affect their run and walk speed. Um, but right now they're expecting me to run. But I can just turn around and go back. You know, you can't control what the player does. <laughs> so, okay, so if we look up here, 
we can see that there's pink music blocks and there are things that bounce off of them to make the notes. Those hammer brothers make uh, a certain noise, those, uh, those munchers make a certain noise, those fire flowers make a certain noise, and then there's something, a surface for them to land on so that they don't land back on the pink music blocks and keep bouncing over and over and over. Sometimes you want stuff to keep bouncing, uh, and sometimes you don't. And in this case, they just want each note to sound once and then stop. So the, oh, I got hit and I got hurt. Oh no. So, um, so stuff will just bounce once and then stop in this case. Uh, so let's go through. And then if we just stay here, uh, you can hear the, the rhythm keeps going at that point because they're expecting you to just go through the door right away you don't have to you can stand there so they've got um the melodic part of the level is uh linear it just goes once every note sounds once but the rhythmic part is looping uh, and i'll tell you how looping works in a sec in a little while here but for now let's go listen to these little songs and uh and this is how this one's supposed to sound. Yeah, and our rhythm keeps going. And if a hammer hits me on the helmet, it also makes a noise. So that's something to keep in mind, too. Um, so that song was a Mario song. Uh, oh, and I should have mentioned for questions. You can use your channel points to ask me questions, and I'll check at the end uh, what questions are there. Uh, you can also, if you don't have enough channel points, you can just ask questions in chat, but it's pretty likely I'll get distracted and forget to read chat. <laughs> so that is a risk. Um, I can see that Meg has asked a question. What is the best Mario song? Um, what is the best Mario song? I'm going to think about that and answer it in a little while. Um, okay, so this one has conveyor belts, and they're going backwards, so it's actually going to slow me down. So I, again, I can't walk. I have to run. Um, so this is a slower tempo than the other songs that we heard. So that's a, one way that you can make a slower song. And um, that was a Luigi's Mansion song, I think. <clears throat> it's Kirby. So, this is a really well-made level of linear music. Um, and it gives you something to do. You have to listen and pay attention so you can get the quiz right and win. Oh, and here, those sound effects are happening along with the background music. So that's another thing to keep in mind, is you can use sound effects in your level uh, as part of the music. And you can either silence the background music, which is what most people do when they're making music levels, or you can leave the background music going and do music and sound effects that goes along with it. Um, okay, so... Um, what else was I going to say about that level? Okay, let's go into a, um, into the making levels section of this game, and I'll show you some more stuff. Okay, so we're going to go into this level called, oh, not that one. This one called linear and okay so this is the simplest way to do it we've got a pink note block which again if you um if you hold on it you can choose white or pink i'm gonna hmm what should we do first i think first i'll show you if we don't have auto scroll and if the notes are white instead of pink, I'll show you what happens. Just so you can get an idea of what the difference is. And I also want to show you um, 
sound effects. So the way that you silence the music is you go over here and you pick this little character with a mask on their mouth. That means silence, and you place it, you drag it right onto your character, your player character. And that's what makes the music stop. You can also play it on the place it on the background, and if the player crosses that space, that'll silence the background music for, I think, just for a moment. But um, that's not what we want. We want it to be always silent, so it goes on the player. Um, so... Um, let's go back to our regular menu, and let's just play this level as it is right now. Here I go! Yeah, they just make that bonk noise, and it's the same pitch all the time, and it's the same sound all the time, no matter what hits it. So, and we can walk forward, and we can see this other, these pink music blocks make pitches, and, and this little mole... I have put a, uh, a donut above it, but it doesn't jump as high as these munchers, so it, it doesn't land on it. But there is a way to fix it, which I'll show you. All you have to do to make this only sound once is put the, the donut in the same place as the little mole, and then it will jump high enough to land on top of it, and then its note will only sound once. So. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's make these pink music blocks so that they actually make pitches. And let's add auto scroll to our level. We want our custom auto scroll. So the reason it's custom, uh, now, did it remember my custom auto scroll stuff? I don't know if it did. I think it looks like it's just this one speed all the way through. And it doesn't really super matter, but I think I'm gonna undo, undo until I get back to how it was before. Hmm. Okay, I think we're back to how we were before, but, hmm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just had two different speeds in my custom auto scrolling, and it's not like a huge deal, but it's, uh, just curious if it saves it when you go away from it, so, I don't know. Okay, let's play the level and see what happens. Here I go! Yeah, that's not right. Oh, no! Okay, let's, um... Switch our auto scrolling to the fast speed. Maybe? Let's try that. Here I go. Yeah, and there's our little mole doing its best. Um, okay. So what we had there was some of our notes repeated because they had nothing to land on and some of our notes did not repeat. Um, so, uh, and as we saw before, you can change the speed of the song by changing the speed of the auto-scrolling or by forcing your character to walk or run or by having conveyor belts on the ground that make your walk or run slower or faster. And some people put text on the screen either made out of blocks or coins that might say walk on it or it might say run. You can do that kind of thing to give people a guide. Um, so, uh, mm -mm -mm. I think that that was what I wanted to say about this particular, uh, level. So let's move to a different, uh, level. And I'll show you my attempt to make a familiar melody, an extremely short familiar melody. Uh, it's only five notes long, but it required a surprising amount of space um, because, okay, let's go back back to the beginning. Um, if you put notes on this starting screen, any notes that are in this area are going to all sound at exactly the same time um, up to about here. 
uh, that's when things start to be in tempo. So you can obviously put notes before that part. You just have to keep in mind how that'll change the speed and the distance between notes. So then um, we've just got a few notes going up here and they what they do is they fall off these tracks and then they go along this track on the bottom and then they go around here and they loop and they go in a circle uh, and they bump against this mushroom. So you won't be able to hear them until they hit this mushroom. So we're going to have a long period of silence as the notes gather themselves up and get into position and then they'll start to loop their music. And there are a lot of music levels like that where there's nothing happening at first uh, until everything gets sorted out and it's all on the looping area that it's supposed to be on. And you can't even see them because they start moving when they're off screen, just before you reach them. And that's it. So I want to show you something about the direction that the notes travel. The reason this is diagonal like this is to make them go the correct direction on this track. But if we had it straight down like that, let's see what happens. Where are you going? Come back! Oh no! So, uh, you have to be careful about how you lay out your loops uh, because sometimes you'll get into a situation where your note blocks or other objects just kind of go the wrong way. Um, so, uh, let's talk about different types of instruments. Different instruments will make different noises. Uh, the mushroom made the beepy noise that we heard. Uh, some objects don't bump up against music blocks, like coins, for example, they're stuck in position, they don't fall, so they don't bump music blocks and they don't make noises. But let's put a frog suit in that spot. And start again. Uh, I assume they remember the last horizontal direction they were going. I believe so. I think that's part of what causes it. Um, but that is a guess. There, and now we've got a nice uh, violin sound because that's the sound associated with the frog suit. Um, so when I was laying this out, um, okay, let's talk about pitches, um, all these blocks, you can see the grid on the background. They're all a semitone away from each other. Um, so this is our starting note and the second note is two semitones up from that. This is one semitone up from that. And this is one, two, three, four, five semitones up from that. And that's one semitone down from that. So it's pretty easy to know what the pitches are gonna sound like as you place them. The tricky thing is the timing. Um, so, um, timing, now, in this particular layout, in this linear layout, isn't so bad. Um, as long as you've got everything starting as you approach it, and as long as the screen is always moving at the same speed, you know that you know, this amount of space is twice as long as this amount of space, so it's going to be twice as much time as well. So that's not so bad to figure out. It's when you want to... Hmm. I'll show you things getting more complicated as we go along. But this layout here, you can kind of almost think of it as sheet music. Um, you can say, I don't know, every one of these grid squares horizontally is a quarter note or an eighth note or whatever it is and then you can just count them and that's not so bad because for whatever reason when they're falling a distance onto a line like this they uh i believe they travel forward at the same speed 
when they're falling through the air as when they're on the track. So you don't have to account for the height of their fall in this case. I'll show you some cases where you do have to account for that and it gets real complicated. So, um, <clears throat> let's now move on to looping levels. I'm going to show you an example. Um, I'm actually going to have a drink of water first, so one moment. Uh, dot phase has asked why are you so awesome and um, the answer is uh, a lot of hard work <laughs> thank you so much for the compliment I appreciate it uh, Meg has asked what if you want a long note uh, you have to pick an, uh, an item that just naturally has a long note um, you can't change the length of the notes um, they just are as long as they are, which is kind of a shame, but would add more complications. So maybe it's for the best. <laughs> uh, OK, so let's go to course world. And the next level I want to show you involves looping. And it's oh, I want to go to my liked courses and choose Melodic Cats by MK8. And there's going to be some meowing in this level, uh, but that's not all there is. So we've already got a little simple loop of rhythm sounds. Oh, and they're also using that clacky noise of the one-way gate as part of their rhythm, which is interesting. And we got away from the clacky one-way gate, and so we can't hear it anymore. But we can still hear the meowing. Because we're still close to it. So you can kind of control what sounds turn on and off based on where the player is at any given time. So this is a really long loop with lots of notes in it. Um, and it took a few seconds to start up when we first entered the room. So those notes were all flying to their positions on this track before they started sounding. So here, we can't see what's making the melody sounds, but we can see some of the percussion sounds, and that's the uh, those munchers in the top left and the bottom right. We can see that on the top left loop, there are two music blocks moving around, and each one um, bumps into two munchers. So the first one bumps into two munchers, the second one bumps into two munchers, and then the bottom uh, right loop takes over and does the next four beats in the same way. So they could have easily done um, four music blocks on the same loop, I'm pretty sure, but they decided to split it up into two separate loops. It could have been that they were restricted in some way for where they could place things. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, uh, hmm. maybe it has to do with the pitch um, that the music blocks would have, because even percussion sounds can go high or low depending where you start them from. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was interesting that they uh, that they've got multiple munchers and multiple music music note blocks on the same on two different loops. So. Maybe it was to make a silly face. <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> um, okay, so. Here we go. Into the next room. Uh, so once again, now we can't really see what's making the melody. 
We can't see what's making the rhythm either in this room. We can't see much of all, at all in this room, so. And I'm gonna have trouble pressing up with the right timing to get on these vines. Ah. Okay, that's not so bad. Oh, and then we've got a linear, oops, a linear music section. We're done with all our loops. And now we've got this tune. This is another way to control the speed at which the player moves, is force them to hang on to a vine which is moving. There, nice. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to um, the level making area and look at some more examples of things I tried to make myself. Um, oh, we've got to get out of here before we can... Ah, sometimes the menu is a little confusing in this game. Okay, so... Let's look at this one called off-sync boxes. One of the first issues that I had when I got started was that I couldn't figure out why different things would go out of sync with each other. My thinking was the box on the left has eight segments and the box on the right has four segments. So in theory, they should line up with each other. It should take twice as long to go through the left loop as the right loop. Um, I'm going to actually play this for you and it's going to take 60 seconds to go off beat by exactly one uh, quarter note, what I'm calling a quarter note. So let's actually, I'm going to be quiet and let's listen to this for 60 seconds. I know that's a weird thing to do during a presentation, uh, but we're going to do it anyway and we're going to end when the timer says 240. Okay, so hopefully it was pretty clear to you that that uh, right, that um, sort of a tss sound on the right shifted position by a beat over the course of that minute. So I tried my best to figure out, I did eventually find out what causes it, but my first guess was that um, the uh, corners uh, take a different amount of time to go through than those straight connectors. Um, and, um, okay, so I thought, I, at first I thought, do I have to have exactly the same size and shape of box for every single loop in my level? Because that's gonna take up a lot of space because melodies tend to be pretty long and rhythm boxes usually don't have to be so long, right? Um, so let's go out of here and open up a level called in sync boxes. <laughs> um, so you can see here when it loads, you can see here that we've still got a small box and some big boxes, but now they're different shapes. What the heck? Why is it like this? Okay, so this one 
no matter how long we play it for, it's going to stay in sync forever and ever and ever. And the explanation is really weird. Um, so above, at the beginning of the presentation, I linked to a video. And the video is in Japanese, but it has English subtitles. And it's about correction lengths. Um, that's what they call it. Um, this video is linked to from the document that I also linked above, the document by BB Mario Maker 2. Uh, okay, so the idea is that um, if stuff goes off sync, there are ways to correct it. And one of the ways to correct... No, wait, hang on. Let me think about this again. What is a good explanation? It's not... Um, okay. A correction length happens, for example, if uh, you've got a length of at least three straight segments uh, with no bend in them. So I believe the idea is <laughs> that the, uh, the previous level we looked at where there were three straight segments, then a turn, then three straight segments, then a turn, that box was correcting itself every time it went along one of those lengths of three. But the small box doesn't have any lengths long enough to correct itself. So it was going off sync and the other one was not. But in this example, all three boxes have no correction lengths. So they all continue to be the same. Uh, I don't know. It's a little confusing to me still, but that's the idea. If you want two boxes to be on sync, in sync with each other forever and ever, they either need to both have correction lengths or both not have correction lengths. Um, yeah, so that's my understanding anyway, as a beginner. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I, I recommend reading the document or watching the video to find out more about it. Um, because it's uh, it's all a little uh, complicated. So, um, and I think that possibly it does have to do with the number of corners or the number of lengths or whatever. So, and if you've got, you know, you need to have the same number of correction lengths for each loop. So if, if they all have zero, then that's good, as in this case. Um, so it doesn't have to be exactly three straight lines in a row with no bend. It could be four. That would still count as one correction length. Um, but if you've got six straight lines in a row with no bend, that would count as two correction lengths. So, um, yeah, I don't know why it's like that, but it is. <laughs> so, um, 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 yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure if I explained that as well as I could have, but that's, uh, that's my understanding of it so far. So, um, let's look at another thing. Um, this level called Beat. In this one, I wanted to have, um, I wanted to have sounds happening more often. And this was a bit of a complicated one to figure out in that, um, I wanted to have four evenly spaced beats on a box of this shape and size. I wanted them to just all fall onto it, but I wanted all these notes to be the same pitch as each other, which means I needed all of the music note blocks to start at the same height as each other. And I couldn't just drop them all downward because there aren't four uh, straight paths in a row. There's only three. Um, so I needed to make this one longer and then do some fiddling to make the timings match up. So some of these you'll see are starting out going downward and some of them are going upward so that they have time and then they bump up against the edge and then they come back down again. So um, the order in which you hear these is you hear the first one, then the third one, uh, because it's got more space, more distance to travel before it hits this object. And then the second one is the third note you hear. Because <coughs> it travels upward and then comes back down. And then this one is the last one you hear. Uh, just one moment, I'm just going to drink some more water.
So, um, uh, let me read this. Uh, comment in chat. It might be engine optimization. Something like groups of three segments in a row getting replaced by a single large segment. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually makes some amount of sense. So there are few objects, fewer objects on the screen than there would have to be otherwise. Okay, anyway, let's take a listen to this. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, let me show you what happens if I make this one go up before it comes back down. And then, let's see the same thing over here. And then let's see what happens if this length is shorter. So we ended up making two of our blocks land in the same place. So they sound at the same time. So basically if it starts here and goes up one block and then down again, it's like the same timing as if you start two blocks to the right, but go directly downward right away, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so basically timing takes some experimenting, especially when you want to have specific pitches, because if you start, if you're like, I just need a little more time, I'll just start, I'll just start this one from higher up or whatever, all of a sudden you've changed the way it sounds. And that one's not a huge difference, but if we, uh... And it makes more of a difference with more melodic instruments, but even these percussion instruments do sound a little different. Okay, so... Um... Let's go to... Oh, wait, I was gonna talk also about the direction that these things travel. So one thing I tried as I was trying to line up their their timings and whatnot was I tried just having them come in from the side or whatever. Here, let's see what happens here. Okay, that one works out, but if we go like this, and I think that's not even going to land on the box. That's going to just fly away. Here I go. Whee! There it goes. Okay. And then... Here, let's, uh... Oops. Let's delete some stuff. Let's mess up our little song. Okay, let's, uh, what? Track right here. And put a block on it. Where's our music box? Oh, they're there. Ah, there we go. Now yeah, it's going the wrong way around the circle. Oh no! Which, uh, <coughs> isn't a huge deal. You can still get the timings to line up because obviously it takes the same amount of time to go around the loop. Uh, it's just a little harder to visualize what the timings are going to be. Okay, so, 
And I've just realized now that that one's making a note. Um, what did I do? It's not doing a tss noise. It's doing a bong. And I'm not 100% sure why. Oh, it's uh, it's Toadette. That's Toadette's noise. <laughs> okay. So. <clears throat> um... Okay, let's go and look at a different level. This one is off think boxes too. Um, this is, I was still experimenting with trying to figure out what was up with the think of these things. And I thought, what if they're the same size and shape, but one's horizontal and one's vertical but we still have a small one and two big boxes. And I hadn't yet found out about the, uh, just put more corners in them to make them line up, which seems super weird to me. But, uh, here we go. <clears throat> here go. This one uh, is just as off sync as the first off sync boxes that I showed you. But the, the two left boxes, the horizontal one and the vertical, they are in sync with each other. It doesn't matter uh, what way around they are. They've got the same number of correction lengths, basically. So otherwise, they can be however you want. Um, yeah. So that's all I wanted to say about that one. <clears throat> this one is called Fall Timing. And I, I was trying to figure out how long it takes these music blocks to fall um now some of these are straight lines um they're vertical lines and some of them are diagonal lines and that does make a difference um and the distance they fall from also makes a difference so let's check this out so these are in sync with each other in that they're Never going to change their timings in relation to each other from this point. But um, the, the second line, the vertical one, uh, it fell just a teeny tiny bit sooner than the one from the diagonal line, the third line there. And um, yeah, similarly, the first line versus the fourth line, I think... Now, which one is first there? Well, you can hear that they're they're not in sync with each other. There are four distinct sounds. I'll shut up for a second so you can hear that. So yeah, um, basically, oh, and curved lines also have a different timing. Let me just show you that. Oops, we've got to open up the bottom of our line here. Here we go. Here I go. Yeah. So info that I got from that video I linked, the video by Ma Lo, uh, it says, what if, if one straight track equals one quarter note, then one diagonal track is about a quarter note plus an eighth note and one curved track is about a half note minus a 16th note. And also you can do some math. I haven't checked the math on this, but it said three diagonal tracks plus one curved track equals six straight tracks and two diagonal tracks plus three curved tracks equals eight straight tracks. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is too much thinking for me, but I'll paste all that info right into the chat. So, <laughs> oh no, there's no, uh... oh dear. There's uh there's no line breaks in that. Oh no. So I'm gonna put some uh some slashes in there to hopefully make it easier to read and paste it all over again. Give me one quick sec. Because I feel like 
if you can wrap your brain around this, it's important info. You know what I mean? So let's go paste that. Oh no, you got my geometry in my music theory. You got music theory in my geometry. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yeah. Basically, this is the point where I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much more complicated than I thought it was. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, let's open up another level. Let's open up this one called Beat Plus Tune. This is where I was trying to make, um, <laughs> What? Math and music being related? Oh no, yeah, I know they're very related usually. I'm just not used to this particular way that they're related. Okay, so you remember how in that one music level I showed you um, where I tried to make a little segment of the Batman tune? Uh, we wrote out the notes from left to right. It was basically like sheet music. And the reason it was like that is that the notes didn't appear on screen until we got to them. We had to scroll the level before the notes would start moving. So the first note that we got to, which was the leftmost note, was the first one that got to the instrument that was making the sound, which in that case was a mushroom, I'm pretty sure. Now in this case, all these notes are going to start moving at the same time because they're all on screen at the same time. And that means the note that's going to get to the instrument first, which is this muncher here, is this one that's on the bottom and closest to the right. So it's almost like backwards sheet music, except that you see these three notes that are one on top of the other, they look like they should be a chord. Well, their fall distance makes a difference in this case. It takes longer for this top note to get to the instrument, so it's going to sound later than the ones that are directly below it. Um, and, okay, so I'm basically treating this as a part of a major scale. So I've got two semitones between these two tracks, two semitones between these two tracks, and three semitones between these two tracks. Um, so it's like going from C to D to E uh, to F. Wait, no, from C to D to E. Oh, to G. Yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> yeah. So I skipped F, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, this one that's on the bottom right is going to sound first. So it's almost like backwards sheet music, except that you have to really fiddle with the timings or else really know what you're doing with the timings. And it took me quite a while to make something that sounded sensible. Uh, but let's... Uh, do, do I not have uh, I thought I had some auto scrolling on this. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a listen. Here I go. So <laughs> It, uh, I got fed up after these few notes, so the loop isn't even as long as the rhythm track. And the reason the rhythm loops are so long is I was still at the point where I thought all the loops had to be the same length and shape as each other. Um, and I, I also want to share with you another silly issue that I had, which, um, if I just had a tiny bit more knowledge, uh, it would have been a lot easier, but... I thought that I couldn't use certain sounds here. Um, let's delete that and put in a mushroom and I'll show you what was happening that was making me very frustrated. Uh, let's start this up again. Why did the mushroom disappear? <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. And uh, and I thought there's some 
objects that simply don't stick around on screen if they hit music blocks too many times. But it turned out that all that was happening is it was getting bounced upward into an empty space between music blocks and then getting smushed between a music block and the wall. Oh no! Whereas munchers cannot get smushed in that way and they survive. So it was all my fault that the mushroom was disappearing. Um, so now that we know that, let's, uh, let's watch that again. And you can just watch the mushroom get smushed and that's why it disappears. Same with fire flowers, they disappear too. See, and now that I know that, it's obvious. And all you have to do to fix it uh, is put some ground right above it and it won't go between two music blocks. See? Perfect! Not a problem. <laughs> uh, Meg says maybe you could use that to your advantage to get a note that fires end times and then stops. That would be brilliant if I could get that figured out in a in a way that I wanted it to happen. Yeah, I like it. Um, okay, so what else was I going to say about this particular level? Um, oh yeah, that was... Uh, Basically, okay, so we've got a custom scroll, and then I stop the level from moving past this brick wall. Anytime you've got a wall that goes all the way to from top to bottom, um, the level won't auto-scroll past it, and you, your player can't move far enough to move past it. You need to get some bombs to blow up this wall, for example. Um, so you could stop on some looping music and then provide a bomb that allows them to keep going to stop that music if you want it. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next level, um, which is called Bounce. And this is about uh, looping music just by having the objects bounce off of the music blocks rather than go around tracks. And I also wanted to mention, you can't see any of this from down here. And it doesn't matter, you can hear it anyway. Uh, these two screens worth of height uh, is all audible from wherever the player is. Um, so you could have one screen of height for whatever the, the level is, whatever the platforming is they have to do, or whatever, and then just have all the music happen up here. Um, so, let's... Uh, where's Toad at? Let's put her up here. So obviously the melody is looping around a track, but the percussion is just bouncing. And those slopes are affecting the timing of the bouncing. The, um, there are two different grades of slopes, and they, uh, they take different amounts of time to bounce up into. And I copied this setup. It's altered from a setup that I got from someone called Cardboard Box in Composer's Discord channel. And that one was originally set up to have the right timing for when you're running by uh, on an auto scroll level. But this one I altered so that it has the right timing for when they all start at the same time. They're all on screen with each other at once. Um, oh, thank you very much, Austin, for stopping by to watch as much as you could. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, so yeah, so I altered that so that the rhythms would work here, and I, I kind of like it. It's it's fairly simple, uh, relatively speaking, but one thing to note is it's important that this ground is here in the same space that the music blocks are in. Um, because here, I'll show you what happens if I take the ground away. It takes longer for the objects to bounce downward and back up again if the ground is not there. See, and that's not the timings that I wanted. Whereas, if we put this ground back... Okay. Um, now, the melody versus the percussion is sort of a 3 over 4 
polyrhythm, I'm pretty sure. They're, they're sort of, um, yeah, one of them's in four and one of them's in three, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure what to do with that info, but that's what I think it is. Um, oh, if you have a vertical level, now th this is a horizontal level, it scrolls this way. If you have a vertical level, which I think you can only do in the in the second screen of your level, if you know what I mean, you can't do it right away from the beginning, but you can set up the second area to be vertical. It's a similar idea where the two screen width is what is available to you in terms of what you can hear from where the player is. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, Wandering away um, silences the sound. Um, let's uh, let's put more ground in, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's start from the beginning. And if you just kind of walk away, you can't hear the things anymore when they get too far away from you, basically. Um, and you can use that to. Um, turn on and off certain sounds depending where the player is in the level. However, if there are global objects making the sounds, certain objects are global, which means they always exist no matter where the player is. So let's, uh, let's delete that and put a, uh, a Bowser Jr. there instead. Um... Oh, so it's uh, it's repeating itself. Let's uh, let's go up and take a look. I want to show you this. Hang on. I know I'm running out of time, and I am aware <laughs> of what the time is, but I want to show you this. Here I go. So he's double bouncing on these note blocks, and we can fix that. But basically, if we wander away, we can hear that melody, but not the percussion. Yeah, so no matter how far away we get, we'll always hear that because Bowser Juniors and other bosses are global entities. Um, I just want to real quick show you how we fix the double bouncing. Um, all you do is you put it on a corner. Um, and that way... As the object approaches, as the note block approaches the object, it won't make a noise, but it will as it goes away. Um, so if it's a straight path, it can potentially make a noise on the approach and as it goes away as well. So let's uh, take a look at this. So if we, yeah, if we once again replace this with Bowser Jr. We can see. Yeah, only one hit. Awesome. Um, so, oh, however, Bowser Jr. can jump up out of that block. So n possibly not a very good instrument. You have to do some experimenting. <laughs> um, so... Um, okay, we come to the end of the time now, and I don't seem to have more questions other than what's the best Mario song, and I'm sorry, I have no idea what the best Mario song is. Um, I do like some of the ones in Mario 2, though. Uh, <laughs> I recommend starting with making your own melody, because that way no one knows if it's different than you originally planned it. If, if your rhythms end up a little weird compared with what you expected maybe that's how you planned it who knows or if your notes won't fit where you thought they would you can change the notes it's fine um <laughs> uh and then once you've sort of got the hang of that then move on to well-known melodies after that is what i would say um so i was gonna show you another cool level but i'm out of time um so uh thank you so much everyone for watching i really appreciate it i'm actually gonna put the uh the level code of the really cool looping level um it's called here where is it now um it's called six feet thunder by zen mai 
and uh, and it's really neat. I highly recommend it. I'm pretty sure they use the thing where you um, you have different things turning off and on depending where the player is because it sounds like a really long tune with a lot of sections in it um, as you move around just one room. So it's really well done and cool. Um, uh, stay tuned, the next run is The Dramaturgy of Pathologic 2, How a Video Game Uses Epic Theater to Incite Revolution by Prof. Clary Sage. Really looking forward to that. And, uh, and thank you so much, Edge Case Collective, for uh, hosting me and everyone else. What a great event. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.